Hi everybody, Chip here. Uh, as I was leaving for school today, the big brown truck was coming up the road and I stopped him to see what he had for me and got my new toy here. A uh, year or two ago when I first started getting into electronics and soldering, I made the mistake of buying a Radio Shack soldering iron, aka barn burner, aka they don't make any tips, replacement tips for them. Well, now that I'm into electronics and I've talked to a bunch of people, I've realized that Radio Shack is no longer about ham radio operators or electronics hobbyists, they're more about peddling cell phones, so enough said about radio crack. But uh, hopefully my little introduction there gave you an idea of what's in my new box. And this just came in from eBay, I ordered it from a company called New Shining Image in New York. Now, I'm not a big fan of Chinese products. Actually, it's kind of ironic considering I lost my job to China. It really kind of pisses me off. But uh, I couldn't find any real bad reviews other than little minor quirks with it. And uh, it was $85. And, I mean, you, you, you can't beat the price. But hopefully it stands up. So what I got here is a new soldering and hot air rework station combination. Now let's, uh, let's open this booger up and see what we got. I just got it in the mail. This is the first time I've seen it. It's going to be the first time you see it. And uh, once I get it all unpacked, I'll cut the and show you everything. I'll cut the video and then we'll go to the desk and I'll start uh, taking some stuff apart to see how well it really works. So uh, let's get in. I want to see it. This side, that side, and there's right up the middle. Forgive my dog out there, she barks at herself. She's kind of stupid. That's what you get for getting a rat terrier. Okay, it's a carton inside of a carton, so they apparently took some good care to pack it. I'm just gonna flip it upside down and slide it out that way. Holy hell, it's in there tight. It's coming slowly but surely. It is a box very tightly packed inside of a box. Uh, I'm going to need to grip the outer box between my feet and actually pull with my hands on the top. Oh, there we go. So there's the inner carton. Hey, now i got another box to ship eBay stuff in. Alrighty. SMD rework station. High quality. ESD safe. Uh, this is the 852D Plus model. See if it says anything else on it. CE certified. So apparently this was made for the European market because I don't see a uh, UL certification. But uh, we can figure it out. As long as it's 110 volt, that's all I care. Okay. Instruction manual. <laughs> right away I got a kind of giggle. The instruction manual, they were kind enough to write in Chinese. Sorry guys, I don't read this crap, so I'm going to have to figure it out. Uh, it is a big unit. They got some loose parts laying here on top, so let's pull these out first. Uh, some kind of bracket huma thinger, we'll figure it out. I believe that's the metal bracket that goes on top of this piece here, which is the actual pencil stand for the, uh, uh, yeah, I can't even talk right now, the soldering pencil. We got three spare tips for the hot work blower. Now that's cool. Uh, one, two, three, four, five extra soldering tips and a little pretty thick vinyl Ziploc pouch to keep me from losing them. But it looks like I got a real sharp point chisel tip, a larger chisel tip, uh, another pointed one that is very, very fine, and then uh, I'm not sure what you call it. I think, I don't know if you call it a spoon tip or what, but the shape of it is for more or less pouring solder on uh, SMD components. Let's see what's over here. Okay, that's just a wire. 
we got the soldering pencil, which also already has a tip in it, so you've already got six tips in. Let's, uh, I'll get it. Let's take it out of the bag now. Fell with it. Might as well have some fun. Uh, it's got a reasonably long cord on it. Um, also, it feels like the wire is uh, like a silicone material. It's not a stiff wire like on my Radio Shack one. So this ought to move around pretty easily without kinking and you know bowing up and getting in your way and everything else. It looks like it's got a six or seven, uh, one, two, three, uh, six pin DIN plug on it. Um, you can see by the end of it, it looks like a Heco iron. You know, you can change the elements and the tips out pretty easy just by unscrewing the barrel. What else we got? What else we got? Oh, holy cow! I don't know if this was a goof or if this was intentional. I got a whole second soldering pencil in there. Don't tell Shining Image, I'll just keep it. Um, it's marked Kendall. But uh, these Kendall, A10, uh, that other Chinese name, Y-E-H-I something, they're all the same soldering iron. They're all made in the same factory. They're just all rebranded for different, you know, salespeople. So actually I got two soldering tips, two soldering pencils. So I got five spare tips and then a tip on each one of the irons. So I got seven tips total. Okay, already looking pretty good. Let's see. Yes, a 110 power cord. That's kind of important for me because I don't live in China. Uh, and then it looks like we're going to have to pull the, the big unit out. Oh, Lord. Okay, and the uh, blower's already attached to it. Let me set this down on the desk so you can see it. I'll get the box out of here. Any more important stuff I might need? Oops, what's this doohickey? Oh, that's the little IC popper. More of a joke than anything. Let's get this box out of the way. Um, it's metal. It's got some pretty long cordage on it, which makes it handy. Yeah, I'll be able to get everywhere on my workbench with it. Let me get it out of the plastic so you don't get all the reflection. And you can actually see the thing. Um, it has a fuse on the back and that's it. It doesn't have a switch on the back, which is kind of good. I know those new A10s, I've heard people complaining that it's got a, a switch, kind of like a computer so that power supply on the back of it. So I'm going to set this up on the desk now. Kind of turn it towards the camera so you all can see it. And let me get the bag off the hot work gun. And it comes with the hot work gun. And fold my knife up so I don't cut anything important with it. Now this here, I'm assuming, is the rack for the hot air gun. Yeah. You gotta screw it in and it holds your hot air gun. It might actually go like this. Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, the only thing I don't like so far is some of the newer units or some of the other units actually have a magnetic cutoff switch in here. So once you put it in there, you know, it'll ramp down the temperature and shut off. But uh, like I said, I'm not bitching yet. For $85, it's gonna take it not working to get me to bitch. Here's that. As a matter of fact, let me reach over the camera and grab my little handy dandy little screwdriver. And I know from reading on the internet that this has a diaphragm pump inside of it. And that's what creates the, uh, the hot air through the gun or forces air through the gun. The other heating element's actually up in the gun. And it says take these three screws out of the bottom. They secure the air pump in transit. So let's just take them out now before I forget about it. They said if you turn it on with these screws in there you could potentially damage it and it uh, sounds like a jet engine running instead of a nice quiet pump. So, uh, all right now I got three extra screws to add to my collection of hundreds of thousands. And then while I'm at it, I'm also going to attach the, let's see, how do I want this? 
Uh, yeah, I'll put this on this side. That'll keep it away from my power supply that I have over there. that on my screwdriver without dropping it and losing it, which I'm really good at doing. Put that on there and get this screw started. Okay, and flip it around. And just snug it up and not tighten it up. And that ought to hold it in place good enough to get this screw in there. They've got screws on both sides of the unit so you can attach this holder on either side. Okay, so I'm gonna snug that up and we're cooking in Brooklyn. So kind of point that back at the camera so you can see it. Yeah, this tube between the hot air gun and the, uh, just feels hollow, but there's not, it's pretty much hollow. There's some electric cords running in there because the heating element's up here, but there's a diaphragm pump in the box that blows the forced air out through it. So just hang that up in there, and that's where the hot air gun goes. And now for the, just take one of the pencils that came with it and take the, uh, twisty off. Now this cord isn't the longest in the world. I might actually prefer that it be slightly longer but my electronics bench is actually no wider than the desk I'm working on so it'll easily reach from the wall out past the end of the bench so I should be able to do you know work in a pretty good area with it. And let's see here. Where's the pump? Here's the pump. That's a snug plug, and then a little screw fitting. All right, let's sit that on top until I get the, uh, let's get the little pencil hoodger out. Ah. Whoop, just dropped the sponge out of it. <laughs> the sponge is a joke, you're definitely gonna replace it. It's about as thin as a piece of paper. But hey, sponge is a couple pennies. Now one thing I can tell you I'm already going to do, this is made out of plastic and it's relatively light, but there is like a holder, not a holder, I actually wouldn't hold anything down in there because the tip of the pencil is going to go down in there. But I might take one of my big magnets I've ripped out of a hard drive or something that's pretty heavy and stick it down in there just for some weight. But uh, other than that, it's pretty cool. And then the pencil, I'll pull the safety rubber tip off of it idiot tip keep people from stabbing themselves you know idiots like me it's got a soft rubber pencil on it to hold it the tips apparently just change by holding the the barrel unscrewing that and then the tips will just actually it seems fairly fragile when you're taking it apart and then you actually slide the uh, the tip off of that ceramic heater end, but like I said, it looks kind of fragile, so I'm going to have to be careful when I do that. Let's slide that back on and put it back together before I screw something up. As long as you're careful with it, it'll be all right. And it feels comparable to a Hako tip, but. It sits in the holder pretty well. There's one other guy that put a video out there about did not liking, but I mean, it's not going to fall out of there. I mean, if you want it to sit in there really tight, pull the, the rubber doohickey back a little bit, and it should lock in there. Yeah. 
not a big deal at all. Let's see, what else do we got? Let's take these out so you can see them. I'll just set them on top of the unit. You got three different tips for the hot air blower. You got a small one, a medium, oh, that's a large one there, a large one, and a medium tip. And it looks like uh, pretty simple, like, whoop, as I throw stuff around. It looks like a hose clamp type design. You just slide it over the end and tighten a little screw that's on the side of it to tighten it down. And there's three different size tips. I'll get them up close to the camera so you can see them. Small, medium, and large in diameter. And it came with a second pencil. I still think that's awesome. I'm just going to set this one aside in the event I ever blow anything up, or hell, maybe I'll sell it on eBay, make a dollar or two back off of it. And then let's get into this. Like I said, it came in a pretty good thick vinyl bag. And I'll dump them out in my hand and see if I can't get them close enough to the camera for you to see. A pretty good variety of soldering tips. There's five of them there, all the way from chisel tips, that spoon tip, to one that, I mean, damn near as pointy as a hypodermic needle. I guess that's for real tiny work. And I'll put them back in the bag before I lose them. Yeah, I'm not going to be doing anything too complicated. A lot of what I do is just uh, tinkering. People give me old electronics that don't work. I either try to fix them or I take them apart and use the parts that I can use. And Then I'll just collect the rest in boxes until I get tired of looking at it and take it up to the recycling center and just sell it as e-waste. But uh, It's a cheaper hobby than some of my others. You know, this cost me $85, a new Glock will cost me six, $700, so it's cheaper than my gun hobby. Then you got this doohickey. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it together to show you, but honestly it'll probably go in my junk bin. Let's see here. Start that. Alrighty, and I finally got the little IC popper put together. At least that's what they call it. I don't know how in the world it would ever work. It seems too flimsy to do anything, but... I don't know, maybe I'll fiddle with it, look on the internet, see if anybody's ever used it, but kind of look like a, a midget's pitchfork. But uh, other than that, I'll probably throw it in the junk drawer. Now the unit in all in all weighs about 11 pounds. It's actually pretty heavy. And uh, looks like it's in pretty good shape. Make sure my head is in front of the camera. Um, we've got an adjustment for the airspeed. We've got an adjustment for the heat on the hot air gun and we've got an adjustment for the heat on the soldering pencil and then you can turn the pencil and iron on individually or together and I wouldn't want to overstrain the unit and run them both at the same time for any long amount of time but uh, all in all so far without plugging in and trying it yet that's still the test As, uh, I'll zoom in so you can actually see it pretty good and then tip down. You know, so it, 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 it feels pretty sturdy. Thick metal, a thick metal case, not just cheap like duct work, typical of what you get from China stuff. Um, the plastic on it is pretty thick. It doesn't feel like it's just a molded piece of, uh, you know, uh, saran wrap or something. You know, it doesn't form, it doesn't feel like a cheap vacuum formed piece of plastic. It actually seems pretty sturdy. It stays in its holder pretty well. The pencil, like I said, the pencil has like a silicone type cord on it, so it always lays flat. It always stays, you know, uh, pliable. It doesn't all bow and curl up. And then the pencil itself is pretty thin, comfortable to hold. It's got a rubber boot on it to protect your hand. And uh, comes with the holder, comes with the sponge, comes with tips, comes with extra soldering tips, you know, come to a second soldering pencil, it's 110 volt, 
so far I'm impressed. Now I'm going to cut the video and see if I can't clear off my electronics bench a little bit and get this puppy fired up. Okay, well now I'm back over on my desk where I do a lot of my soldering and stuff. Um, <laughs> one thing I've discovered is this is not where the unit's going to sit. I'm going to have to relocate my bench, or not relocate, but kind of re or rearrange stuff on my desk. The one thing that I have found is this big cord for the hot air gun. Uh, it's not as flexible as the one for the solder pencil and it stretches out all the way across my desk and there's really no way to tuck it back out of the way or behind the unit or anything like that. So what I'm probably going to do is move this unit all the way over to the far left hand side of my desk so that this is up against the wall and out of the way if I need it. It's no problem. Uh, but you can see I have the soldering pencil turned on now and I have it set for 350 degrees. And you can see the heater light coming on and off so it does seem to uh, try to maintain its temperature. It's probably flickering on and off so much now because I have a fan located over here on the other side of my desk kind of blowing across the desk. But uh, if I'm right, 350, if this thing's heated up, I've only had it turned on for maybe two, three minutes now before I started the camera back up. Let's set the remote for the camera up here so I don't mess it up. Uh, let's see, a little piece of solder. If I'm right, I should just be able to melt solder right on the the uh, tip of the iron as soon as I get it in range there. It should melt them as soon as I, oh yeah, oh yeah, beautiful. I mean it melted as soon as I touched the tip of the iron. So the iron does get plenty enough hot. And uh, that's one okay going in my book. So let's put the iron back up. But the iron heats up pretty good. Um, holding it right here at the neck of it it's cool as a cucumber. I mean, it should be comfortable to hold for hours without getting your fingers overheated. Throw that back in there. And uh, like I said, this is the first test run of it. So hopefully this thing has some longevity to it and lasts me a few years. Now let's uh, kill the heating pencil. And let's try the hot air rework. And right away, it's a very light hum. You can hardly hear it, but you can hear the diaphragm pump inside of here pumping. Set it up for 350 as well. Get that out of the way. Point that away from the unit. Oh yeah, it's putting some. Make sure it holds it far enough from the wall that I don't uh, actually melt the coating on the wall. Now right now I've only got the air on three. Let me zoom out a little bit. Right now I've got the air on three and you can see the uh, the heat gun here. Uh, right about there I can hold my hand it's getting warm. Uh, right now I'm about 10 inches away from the end of the heat gun actually touching the wall and it's warm but it's not uncomfortable to hold my hand there so it doesn't throw heat too terribly far. Um, it's still heating up. Let's turn the air up a little bit. Turn it up to about six. And now it'll throw the heat out that far. So I'm going to have to keep in mind when using this thing to actually uh, turn down the blower. <laughs> So, so far, so good. Hopefully this thing works real good for me. Um, one thing I've been itching to try, so I'm just going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to let this thing heat up. Let's see if I can do it without burning my hand. Is to hurry up and stick, the, uh, stick a nozzle on it. And well, it has to be a Phillips head, doesn't it? Looks like an old board out of a router or something. Well, she's heating up. 350. Let's see where she's at. Oh, she's right around 350 because the light kicked off as soon as I turned it down a little bit. There we go. So, uh, 
Let me see if I can't bring this camera in closer. I'm on a big tripod, so. That's as tight as the camera can zoom in. So let me try to get this in frame. I'll get it, I will. It's been a long day. I want it right about... Where is that component? Kind of hard to look backwards. There it is. There's a little SMD component. You know, right here. That looks like a 40 pin SSOP package. But uh, I believe that's about as tight in as I can get on it. But uh, hopefully this thing pops off pretty easy and you get an idea how the thing works. So, um, okay, hopefully we can see a little better now. I did ramp up the temperature a little bit to about 400. This lead-free solder tends to uh, seem to take a little longer to melt. So let's, uh, let's try getting this SMD component off again, shall we? This was the main reason I bought this thing, was to be able to get SMD components off. Try to put the butt of my hand down on the end of the board so I can scoot this thing. I don't know whether I used too big of a tip or uh, this uh, just the type of solder they used on this particular board. I think what this was was an old uh, uh, D-Link router I took apart or D-Link cable modem slash router. But uh, so far I'm not having much luck getting this to loosen up but then again this is my first time ever trying to take an SMD chip off of a board so it could be something that I'm doing more than likely it is. Let's try getting some more air. Just singe the hair off my thumb so it should take the air off the solder off the board, I would hope.
trying to push across, push on the board without pushing it clean off the screen, but. <laughs> oh well, I'm not having much luck with that. Let's see if it's just hot enough to melt solder, I would hope. Oh yeah, it's definitely hot enough to melt solder. So, uh, it must be something that I'm doing. But uh, sooner or later I'll get it figured out. And when I do, I'll get rolling on it pretty good. I'm rummaging through my parts bin here next to me to see if I have anything else that I might be able to get off pretty easy. Let's see if I can just flat out melt solder parts and get them to fall off. Actually, let me hang this up. I gotta take a couple screws out. Uh, there's my screwdriver I used earlier. Let's see if I can't get these USB connectors off of this board. Now, if anybody knows, I'm pretty new to electronics. I'm kind of teaching myself. If uh, anybody knows what kind of temperature you actually need to desolder, I've always used this 40 watt soldering iron and it's always worked beautifully. But uh, I don't know if you need more heat with an air gun or not. Let's try to move this in here. I think what I need is uh, a tighter uh, a smaller tip in order to concentrate the heat better but so far I'm not having too much luck with the hot air but like I said if it's hot enough to melt solder it's definitely hot enough to desolder so hopefully it's just something that I'm doing let's reach up here I don't think solder wick will help too much with hot air. I don't see the solder getting shiny like it's liquefying, but that doesn't mean anything. Like I said, I've never used hot air before, so the most hot air I'm familiar with is the hot air I'm full of. So, uh, like I said, give me a while to figure it out. The hot air gun works. It's blowing very hot. I mean, like I said, it's melting solder within a second of getting close to the, uh, the hot air. <laughs> so, I'm on the right track. I'm in the right church, probably just on the wrong pew. So uh, I'll get back to you, but all in all, that's my my unpackaging and demo of it. Uh, like I said, the one thing I'm not impressed with is the fact that the uh, temperature does not ramp down. I don't think. Let me turn it off and see. No, okay. The hot air does keep blowing. Okay. So I retract that statement. When you turn the power off to the wand, to the uh, hot air wand, let me pick up the whole camera and just kind of shoot. When you turn off the power to the hot air wand, you can probably hear that the, uh, the air is still running. You can see the light lit up, but the power to the wand is off. So I'm assuming the air will keep running until the tip gets to a certain point and shuts it off. That's what I was kind of worried about. I was, you see on some of the other units they have the magnetic switch in the handle. This has circuitry inside of it where it just keeps the air running until it hits a certain temperature. 
but uh, also there's a pretty nice close-up of the front of the unit. I don't know if I can zoom out anymore, I can't. But uh, there it is. It's made by, or it, it, it says it's made by Kendall. It's labeled Kendall, but you see a lot of these units out there. Uh, this is a bit of a long video, but hopefully everybody gets some information out of it. And like I said, so far so good. I think I'm, I think I'm going to like this unit. So uh, everybody have a good one. And any questions, feel free to drop me an email. Or uh, feel free to subscribe, reply. I answer just about everything I can. Unless it's a rude or ignorant comment, then I'll just ignore you. But you know how that goes. So uh, everybody have a good one.